remind everybody that the meeting is being digitally recorded, so again, please be respectful of each other when speaking and while listening to what's being said. Uh, is there anyone here for open session? Okay. Uh, Katie, if you will announce me. All right, I got a laundry list. Let me see if I can do these in orders because I started adding. I was like, oh, I got to really tell, talk about that. So um, the Historical Society this Thursday <coughs> at 6 o'clock is having the Quabbin Then and Now presentation at Burnshirt. Um, I guess they're going to be doing historical pictures and stuff, um, but they have a, a presenter coming out and going through the then and now of the Quabbin Reservoir. So it's it looks pretty good from, they have a little Facebook event post and it looks pretty informational and it looks like it's got some good stuff on there. So that's this Thursday at 6 o'clock at the Burnshirt Chapel and it's from the Hubberson Historical uh, Society. The next up is there's two kids in town that um, are working on Project 351. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. It's through the school system and they um, do uh, projects and fundraisers. They're working with Cradles to Crayons and um, they're doing a youth clothing drive. There is currently a bin at the Hubbardston Public Library and the Hubbardston Center School. And the bins will be there between March 20th and March 31st and they're collecting um, clothing and shoes and things like that for um, newborns to I think uh, you uh, like the largest youth sizes so all kinds of kids clothing and stuff so anyone that has any baby clothes you know youth clothes that their kids have grown out of and they're still good um, they can donate them in the bins the bins again are at the Hubbardson Center School and the Public Library through the 31st Two oh, questions on that, Katie. Yep. I don't know if you know the answers. Maybe. Number one, are the bins only accessible during the hours of those two buildings being operational? I would imagine, yes. Okay. And number two, when you say used, I assume we mean gently used. Yes, gently used. used. Yes, yes. That's, okay. what, that's what I said. Nicely, nicely okay. clean, like clothes you could hand down to somebody. Yes. Not, they don't want junk. Um, but yeah, it got, works through cradles to crayons. And again, it's Project 351, and there's two high school student, one high school student and one eighth grade student that is working on that. All right, so then we come up to, let me get my list in order. The Easter egg hunt, which is always a fun thing. Um, all kids are welcome. April 1st, 11 a.m., and the rain date is um, April 4th, and it is at the rec field. Um, it starts out with pictures with the Easter bunny, bring your own camera. The Easter Bunny sits there on the bandstand um, steps and you can like sit around and they'll hold babies and stuff like that. Um, and then we have three separate fields so there's no like little kids getting run over by the big kids. It's all good and we try to keep it organized. Um, once we say go, it's done in five seconds. So, <laughs> like God. Um, but the kids always have a good time. There's always plenty of candy, plenty of Easter eggs for everyone. And like I said, it's, it's free. Um, so come out and get your pictures done. It's, it's a good time for all. And again, that's April 1st at 11 a.m. with a rain date of the 2nd. The 2nd? Okay. Yes. I thought you said the 4th. No, 2nd. April, April 2nd. Did I say the 4th? I yes, apologize. Yes, yes. I apologize. I might have done that. Follow and up it, on that, Katie? Yep. So what's the oldest you're looking for in that? Oh, they can, for great, I don't care. I'm not turning any child away. If there's okay. a kid. Like, so like if you bring like a you Bring your own bag. It's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, bring your own bag. We have some high school kids. We have the big field. We make those kids run. Because if you're gonna, if you want to go out there, you're gonna run for those eggs. We're gonna spread them far and wide. Um, but yeah, it's it's put on through Parks and Recs and um, my Girl Scout troop uh, one one eight zero nine. We fill all the eggs and spread them all out and um, provide the Easter Bunny. So one more question for yeah. you: Are we looking for just town residents on that one? No, or it's open to open all. to the community. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's open to the community. People bring their grandkids from the next town over and everything. It's 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 a good fun day. All right. So the next thing we have is also April 1st, and at the Rod and Gun, the Double Barrel Band and Flippin' the Bird Barbecue will be there. The Rod and Gun is hosting this, and it is open to the public, so if you need something to do that night, that sounds like fun. Uh, then we have the Lions on April 7th at 7 p.m. is having a meat raffle. Um, they got the meats down there, 7 p.m., the doors open. They usually go to, what, like 10 or so, I believe, but it's a, it's a pretty good yeah, until it's done. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so that's April 7th at the Rod and Gun, Lions Meat Raffle, 7 p.m. All right, and then next we have Keep Hubbardson Beautiful Day. That is April 22nd, 8 to noon. There will be a bottle and can drive. 
They will be um, the recycling, electronics recycling, and a dumpster, basically a drive-through just like usual. And you drop, throw your cans out one spot, throw your trash out another spot, throw your recycling out another spot. Um, the recycling, there is a fee, everything else is free. Um, but again, that's April 22nd. There is no rain date and it is eight to noon. Then we have- uh, Follow up when you say, yep. sorry. <laughs> when you say recycling. Electronic a, recycling. Oh, okay. Yep, electronic right. recycling. They do take like metal goods and things like that. It doesn't have to be just electronic. So if you show up with like a bunch of scrap metal, like as long as it's reasonable and it can okay. fit in the back of the truck, they will take it for a fee okay. um, for miscellaneous stuff but usually it's like TVs people want to get rid of their TVs and monitors or stereos or old computers stuff like that is there a fee schedule online that people can uh, there will be I will make a flyer very shortly I had to get the fee schedule from the because I'm the treasurer for Boy Scouts so I had to I have to figure that out so I'm working on that um, but yeah it's usually it's not too bad so First that would question. be up soon yes will there also be Earth Day cleanups that day or yes that or? is the key covers to beautiful <coughs> day so people pick up <coughs> their trash around their area and they bring it and they can throw it in the dumpster so along the street and everything else there are bags available if you don't want to use your own bags you can come swing by and grab a bag and go to someplace that's gross there's not once the snow melts there's always some place gross you can find very easily with nips and miscellaneous trash and junk but it's uh, basically town-wide cleanup um, and you can chuck it in the dumpster there so that's yeah any other follow-ups all right this is the most follow-ups I had on one night this is like fun okay so <laughs> she's got a big announcement in Paxton so <laughs> I know I'm gonna start okay so we got a couple things at Plainview Farm that are super fun and family friendly um, there is a paint night that they're having on May 13th at 2 p.m. and that's family friendly. That's they have a um, a sign up. You have to you know register and pay and everything like that. But I guess you're gonna be painting their alpacas, I think, or something like that. But it is family friendly. They said so it's open to the public. And then they also will be having their spring fling as well on May 20th and 22nd. Again, that is open to the public, and that has a lot of local um, crafters and vendors, um, a lot of townies there so definitely stop in and you can find some nice stuff there um, then we have the Memorial Day Parade on May 29th and they are starting it at 1115 right on the dot a.m. we just got all the info so um, I'm sure more info will come out and I will go over that as it comes um, is that the same time as last year? Or is that different? It's time? a little bit different. I, I think it was 11. So this time it's 11.15. So not by far. More time to commute. Yes, good. not by far. I think it's a, a little bit later, but not too far okay. off. Um, and then we have the Hubbardston Fair in June on the 10th from 9 to 2. Oh, I missed one. I got out of order. There is a Boy Scout race on May 6th at Mount Jeff. More information to follow on that. We haven't had the sign-ups out yet, but there is going to be like a race out in the woods. If you're a racer, or like to run or want to contribute in some way we will take your money as a boy scout <laughs> it's a fundraiser to help raise money for they, they need to fix their trailer so we're going to be doing a um, a wood race out in Mount Jeff I, yeah that's as much as I know okay <laughs> thank you very much <coughs> okay the uh, consent agenda I can tell everybody uh, as far as the minutes we were all here for both of those meetings and the appointments uh, we're waiving the waiting period, so if we can have a motion to accept to approve the consent agenda. I would like to make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. New business. First one is Mary. You're here because I had requested that you, that you come because I said people plus myself uh, asked me some questions in terms of the uh, project of the church. A, a lot of great comments about the way the church looks, but there are a couple of spots that I was concerned about, and as it turns out, so were a couple of other people. Um, sure. And so I just wanted to know, uh, is this a still an ongoing project, or what's going to happen with the front, por front portal and uh, the garden aside at the very top? There's a big, wide gap. Yeah, yeah we know that they're there. When we um, when we booked the project, well, first of all, before I go into that, I just want to publicly thank everyone that um, voted and, and you know um, allowed this to project to go forward for what, with us. Um, the project itself, with everything that we've done so far between lighting and doors and 
the the repairs that needed to be done to the actual building itself, for the roof over the porticos, and everything that we've done so far um, has a little over two hundred thousand dollars. So you have the hundred thousand from the town it was huge, <laughs> huge help for us. So we're very grateful for that, and I just want to let people know how much, how far it went. You know, we were able to do this because of it. We would never have been able to do it for, for that. So, but right now, the original project did not include the soffits and fashion, and it did not include, you know, the eaves underneath. That's why oh, those I places. Didn't know that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it did not include that mainly because. We had to make a decision um, and the expense um, of how we were going to approach it. Because there is the original um, wood, it's probably hand hewn <laughs> um, with all of their, the different, um, the grades that are in there, you know, it's not flat, it's, it's beautifully done. They're, they're really, you know, nicely um, put together. Um, we have to, had to decide and will be deciding um, if we're going to scrape and paint to keep the original, or if we wanted to try to use um, the siding with all of the um, the different looks to it um, to keep it that way, and, and we've gotten a couple estimates. Um, so at this point to paint, which it, we're which would include the the boom truck for us to do the bell tower as well. Uh, it would be all the roof line trim, the painting. Um, we want to include, but she didn't hear, all scraping down and painting the edges of the windows. Because origin our original project was going to be all the windows would be trimmed, but because the older windows that are upstairs, the 1827 windows, the ones up at the top, um, we're actually part of the fr the window frame as part of the window. It wasn't something that could be trimmed. Um, so they trimmed the bottom ones with the, the siding, but they couldn't trim the top ones. Um, those, and of course, as well, are beautifully done, and we didn't want to cover up the, the work that's on them. The so, part, yeah. yeah, we're hoping to, what we'll do <coughs> with this pro next project is going to be to paint, scrape and paint the eaves, replace any of the wood that's rotted, um, any of the, you know, that kind of thing, but the fascia and the, um, those pieces, um, the soffits would all, the freeze board, everything would be done with paint instead of the, because to do it with trim in the, what we used with all the crown accents, they have to use so many different kinds of molding and trim and crown placement. By the time they're done and it's like 900, feet or something once around so you're talking like five different kinds of trim yeah. to just do that one little bit of um, edging uh, the molding um, would have caught would cost us well over fifty thousand dollars so we're gonna go for paint <laughs> have you ever heard of something called rhino lining the, we are, is that the one that like sticks to it's, it it's or paint, something? It's paint, but it's not just paint like it gets sprayed in the back you normally hear in the back of um, pickup trucks it gets sprayed, it's called a rhino liner, but yeah, they we'll do it with houses now. And I don't know how good it is or anything, I don't want to yeah. say that that's the way you should go, but it's not just paint, so I don't know if that might well, last We're going to definitely longer. explore what kinds of paint and you know yeah. what would be the best thing that will hold the longest. Um, obviously the wood is old, so mm -hmm. a lot of it has to be scraped. A lot of it will also probably have to be replaced. Um, we did a lot of replacement wood um, on the, when we did the siding. Um, there were a number of places we had to replace, but um, painting at this point would cost us between thirteen and twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Big difference from fifty, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, which would be using the PVC. Plus, you're not really going to get the same look. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be close, but it wouldn't be the same. But do you look. have that the twenty? So, well, yeah. we're working on budgeting that in. <laughs> mm -hmm. We we still have um, an amount that we still owe on the siding, um, and it's coming down dramatically. Um, you know, we're under $40,000, which considering we st where we started from, um, I think we've done pretty well with a small congregation. So um, we're, um, we've got our yard sales coming up for the spring, and <laughs> um, hopefully be able to get to this. We're hoping that this project will get done this year. We hope by the fall. 
Mm -hmm. I hope by the fall we'll be able to start it. I don't think it's going to be a spring to project. To start? Is that what you said? Oh, the painting? Yeah, once yeah. the painting's gone up, they'll do it quickly. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe how fast they did this. Their crew was amazing. They did the whole, um, and it was over 70 square, I forget how many square our building is, but it's a big building. And they did it in three weeks, three and a half weeks. Um, though that crew was out there from early morning till late at night when it got dark, and they didn't stop. I mean, we came in and brought sandwiches, and they hardly even took a you know a couple bites of sandwiches, and they were back working again. They worked really hard. Mm -hmm. That was a huge project, um, and they did really well. We were really pleased with the company and the work that they did. Um, but yeah, those places were not in the original um, project plan, and that's why they they stayed that way for now because we had to decide how we were going to approach it mm -hmm. and how much it was going to cost and what we could afford because at that time you know with the project the way it was we knew there were going to be extras and we didn't want to over extend what we could afford to do so mm -hmm. that's why it looks like that but we're we're working on it oh thank you all right anyone have any questions for mary or about this but again, thank you for coming out. I do appreciate it because uh, I, I wasn't aware myself that that was not part of the project. Right, right. Yeah, it, it just was something we, at the time when we worked um, with the Preservation Committee as well, we had to decide how we were going to approach it. But then when we figured out how much it would cost and adding another $50,000 or more to the cost of what we were already looking at was a little overwhelming. So. Mm -hmm. We said, okay, let's get the main thing done, which was get the siding on, um, and it looks beautiful. Yes, it does. And then we'll make that our next project, which we really would like to see it done by, you know, into the fall. So. Well, thank you again. Thank you thank all you again, and again, we appreciate um, the help from from the townspeople. That's for sure. Couldn't have gotten it done without it. So. Yeah. And it desperately needed it. Yeah, it sure did. did. <laughs> it's been a blessing, and I pray it's a blessing to everybody that drives by because it really stands out. I was laughing because, um, you know, when you guys had the, your big storm last week with the 30 something inches, and one of the reporters was standing over by the bank or the diner, mm -hmm. and the church was in the background. I'm there, oh, thank God, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're thrilled yeah. and we're happy because we want to see it. It yeah, and then once nice. that's all done, once you get the yeah. rest of those touches done, it will make a, It'll huge, make a huge difference. difference. Yeah, so it will. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to uh, item B, Department of Public Works Garage Roof Contract. Um, this is going to want to fill us in. Absolutely. We okay. did an RFP for this earlier this year. This will be funded with hopefully $100,000 of capital improvement money that has been approved by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and $50,000 secured by Ann Gobi's office in the state Senate budget last year. We're going to have to request that it go over fiscal years, but that is something that they, that happens when I worked in the state Senate. It was something that happened to almost all of the projects. So we put out an RFP and got two. This one at 128,000 and another one that was about 20 or $30,000 more. If you would like to see the other proposal, it's something I can make available to you. Were they RFPs or IFBs? RFPs. And they were an invitation for bids under Chapter 149? Uh, They submitted a sealed envelope with the price only, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's it an IFP. I, it says general bid right yeah. here. Yeah. I want it for general yeah. bid. <clears throat> so we did the invitation for bid process. We put it out there. We followed the guidelines. We yeah. got two people who are interested back. Yes. You've submitted us the documents that you have here. Mm -hmm. I have one question, and yes. I'm assuming the answer is going to be uh, we'll get it in the event we actually enter a contract, but I didn't see the documents for a 50% payment bond. So That's coming once they get a draft contract. of the contract, okay. which will just be the, as you know, the standalone yeah. general contract with the wording from the request and from their bid included. 
Okay, excellent. I have another follow-up question. So it looks like in the documents, as I was reviewing earlier, they appear to be giving us a one-year warranty on their product. If I read that correctly, I think it was in one of the general forms of the bid. That is likely. I do not know what the warranty of roofing usually is. Okay. And But Travis, who I'm sure does know what the warranty of roofing okay. usually is, didn't say anything, and he was... Me and him reviewed these together when we opened them. Okay. I was just wondering, I don't know if we had put out something specific in our bid documents as to how much of a warranty we are looking for. Do not believe so. But if we can just confirm that that's yeah. the standard to make sure that we're not under warrantying our roof. Yeah. What is the well, material of the roof? Metal. 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 The metal roof? Yeah. yeah. I thought they had a lifetime warranty, but that must be yeah, residential. That, that would be a manufacturer's warranty that would get passed through. Right. Is this a labor? Is that Go ahead. You're, you're, you're that's what say the same thing. Yeah, say. that's what I was. It sounds like a labor warranty. Yeah. Um, There's likely more of a warranty with the manufacturer of the actual with the materials. Metal, with the materials. Okay. All right. So I just want to make sure. Yes. One year doesn't sound like a lot for a. Yes. material roof because under the warranties and guarantees section says all prospective bidders on items equipment services that carry warranties or guarantees shall include their sealed bid a copy of the warranty and or guarantee as well as a copy of the warranty and guarantee on the items being bid if applicable warranty starts after the day of acceptance by the using department please complete the following and specify if warranty guarantee is for more than contractually required one year period and it says one year warranty after work is finished. So we just want to make sure that our materials mm -hmm. are warranty longer than that. What, what we need to do is make sure the materials warranty is warranted, warranty longer than that. And if the one year is a labor warranty, we have to see if there's any manufacturer's inspection that has to be has done to prior to sign -off. the manufacturer's warranty sign off, right? Yeah. So are, are all these are all these questions then uh, we can't, we have to postpone the uh, motion to uh, I wouldn't go it. that far but can we this is something I can I can look into Give, prior to, to sign the finalizing the, the contract it's since we can't do it until after July 1 no one's in a particular rush Okay. So. Uh, I have another question, Nate, if I can. <coughs> so the lump sum for the bid amounts one twenty eight five. Mm -hmm. And if I heard you correct, you said a hundred thousand to be authorized to be spent from capital and I lowered the capital number to eighty five okay. to yeah, it's in the budget. So eighty five K from capital and fifty K from the uh, state earmark yep. or whatever, maybe from legislative docs. Yes. Okay. So that still doesn't add up to 125. In, in the bid package? Yes. Um, I thought it says here, part of this contract, that everything would be in the bid package. Um, and you did receive the bid package. And there was nothing in there about material? So it might who's, have been in the original. Whose material they're using or whatever, that might give you a better idea what kind yeah. of warranty we're talking and about. That's something I will look into. Okay. It might have been in the original IFB that Nate put out, because usually yeah. when you're accepting the bid, you're saying all the documents that were part of the original oh, bid request yep. or IFB yeah, are incorporated in into the contract and the documents. But okay. instead of doing a lengthy. Mm-hmm. Contract and <coughs> so I think that's very important. Yeah. The warranty of the material. But the one year labor standard, that's that's a standard. Mm -hmm. That's a one year. And to answer Chris's Hello. question, whatever the amount of the one of the that is needed will be what comes out. There will not be extra money coming out of the capital improvement plan in order to had anything or anything like that mm -hmm. it would be what we needed I will edit it so that in the final rendition of our budget documents it states the exact number of whatever it may be to get to the 128.5 would be like 75,500 so you just have it a little higher right now as a contingency just in case something changes yes 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, would you accept a motion? To authorize him to sign the contract, yes. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we authorize uh, Nate, or the town administrator on behalf of the select board, to sign the contract for the Department of Public Works garage roof with FRG contractors in an amount of $128,500 contingent upon approval of town meeting. Second. Mo motion made and second. second. Uh, any further discussion on any of Yeah, I got discussion. Why are we signing a contract when we're not clear on what's covered? I mean, Wait, we just asked about five questions. different questions. That's what I'm going to check prior to signing it. You're just authorizing the potential signing of it. I will check into into the warranties and circle back with you guys. FRG has been wonderful to deal with. They get back to me really quickly. All of their references checked out as references usually do. But they've been they've been great and I'm sure I will be able to in a quick turnaround get the answer on these warranties. And I will get it back to you without a you guys can the select board obviously has the right to hold this off until the April 3rd meeting if you see it fit and I can get the information on the warranties and circle back so that everybody knows it's above bar. I like that idea. Me too. Put it up for a Okay, then let's uh, we'll uh, call the question of the discussion. We have to vote on this motion and if it so is the position of the board. Okay. To, to vote it down, then we'll deal with the which the other proposal. Okay, so uh, uh, we're we were voting right now on the motion to authorize town administrator to sign the contract based on everything Heather put into the motion. Okay, so all in favor of having that authorization? Aye. Yes. Okay. Opposed. One. Yes. Two. Opposed. Opposed. Crap, why does it always come down to me? Uh, um, I'll it's, post it's, because it's, if we can, yeah, if we can really wait. No, biggie, no if we can wait, I would uh, like, I would like okay. to. Okay, and the yeah. motion is uh, down, turned down. Uh, okay, so now we'll open up with this. Mr. Throw Chairman, another motion. and I respectfully request more time on this matter. <laughs> okay, so we don't have to act anything. No. No. Okay, all right, so be it. We're good. Okay, uh, item C, select board representation on the QRSD collective bargaining. Would you like to? Yes, so that. the Coppin Regional School District is in the process of speaking with their labor unions regarding the collective bargaining process. They reached out to all of the communities and as of this afternoon, two if not three of the communities waived their right to have a representative on this board or on this interview panel. After receiving that email, I did receive a phone call from two fellow town administrators noting that it would probably be the best option of the other communities to have a Hubbardson representative be on this panel because of our outward strong opinions on financial matters regarding the school. They want us leading the challenge. And <laughs> That is still something, even if we did have a volunteer this evening, that volunteer would likely still have to talk to the other two communities. But from what I'm seeing, people aren't lining up to take this opportunity on. When is it? Heather's Wait. on it. Heather's well, on no, it. Well, no, but I know. But the problem is they can't get their dates straight on any of their meetings. And so who, who, who waived their right? Barry was one of them for I sure. Ocam. Ocam and Hardwick. Ocam and Hardwick? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's and only, Barry, so. it's and only Barry. one representative from all yeah, the and communities. It's not, now right? it is. It one was select board member. There's going to be more. But out now, as people are refusing. Are we part of a vote for, for this? Well, it would really just be if one person volunteered, they could do it, and then you'd have to talk to. Or are you asking if you would be part of the vote oh, with yes. the collective bargaining agreements? I believe so. Yeah. No, I don't get along good with those people. So. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's level set what we're talking about here. This has nothing to do with the budget that's coming. It has nothing. This is just well, collective Oh, this has everything to do with the budget. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We pay those. Oh, yeah. So this isn't, this isn't the budget that's coming. This is not the budget that's coming. Oh, yeah. So this isn't, this isn't the budget. This is not the budget. This is a collective bargaining. Yes. 
with, which it definitely has, has an effect. With, it, it has a major impact on the budget because it is a large portion of the monies they'll have to pay to their teachers and other bargaining units. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to get clobbered with their contract yeah. already. I can feel it anyways. I have some questions. Probably five, um, five, and five. Go ahead. This is new to me. Um, have we been, has, have the towns been invited to participate in these contract negotiations in the past? That I do not know. Usually do it's, know? I, I haven't been around long enough in Hubbardston on the board to answer that question because they don't come up every year, right? Right, right. But usually it's standard on the school committee and they usually actually with the regional districts, they have one select board member uh -huh. that's agreed to amongst all the towns who are members. And, and the reason for that is what? They want representation from the town side at the table to express, you know, concerns and it. Now, granted, you're one person amongst however many right. who are going to outvote you potentially. Right. Yeah. Well, but at least you can go on record and you mm -hmm. can fight. Well, who else is on the on this group that is right. talking to the to school the, committee to the collective bargaining people? It's probably it's usually like a subset of the yeah. school committee and the superintendent. Okay, so would in con conceivably would one of our school committee reps? Be I think on Debbie's it? on it. I think Debbie. Oh, is Debbie on might it. already Debbie be on, is on it. Is on it? I, th I, I think so. Okay. That's a yes okay. vote. <laughs> Sorry. So, and but the idea is to give the town, you know, a seat well, at the table yeah. and to also be able to keep people informed of what's happening. And is it usual and customary for all of the district, all of the district towns, except for one, to collapse and? Ask no, this is to do it. since no. I've been on the board. This that's very unusual. <laughs> oh, it usually, is. Usually, oh, it everyone is other... wants, to, or most. Usually, there's more people who come to the table. I, oh. I think our reputation is growing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they're, we, they're, well, they're looking for transparency, right? Well, that's, we went, this is one well, way to do it. But no, but I'm more interested in why nobody else wants to be on this. That's well, because their rates didn't go about. up. If you look well, at the, go up anyway. if you well, look eventually. at the school budget hearing, the budget presentation, right? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. only folks who spoke, I think, one person from another town spoke, and then everyone who was on the call from Hubbardston spoke, yeah. or chatted, or whatever yeah. communication. So I think it's possible to someone's prior comment that our reputation is starting to precede us. Yeah. Um, I see. And that they know that regardless of whether we're going to be able to make a difference or not, at least, you know, whoever's on there from Hubbardson is probably going to speak up if they have concerns. They can call it reputation if they want, but we're scraping for every dime we get, so we have to be careful. Right. Do they want to put a reputation on us for that? Let So be it. So, so well, Nate, do we have any dates, no. times, or any no, information no, on that? Good. At, every, at every email from Jessica Bennett, they have yet to give a time. Ms. Chamberlain had mentioned Wednesdays yesterday, I believe, when we talked to her just in passing, but I cannot take that. Was that for Wednesdays for the screening committee for the superintendent, or is that for the... We're talking about two things at once. Okay. Yeah, so I, was, I think, because I was standing next to you at the time, that that was the uh, screening I thought that was committee. the screening committee yeah. conversation. The you previous you meeting of this Wednesday entity, yeah. previous meeting of this entity was on Monday. So they've that previously met anything. on Monday, but that they, doesn't mean they that they're hop going around. to. That's yeah. what kills it for me is they hop around so much that yeah. I, there's no way. I can't keep up with her. Well, I'm just all, super bummed, overly booked. Well, well, do so. we have anyone on the board who has flexibility or is interested? I'd be very interested to do it, but it depends on what it is. I can only be in one place at one time. I'm not super willing. Well, do you have to like designate Katie. a single individual? Can you have an alternate? For those, they're going to want one yeah. person because you have to sit in with the negotiations every time, right? So you're going back with the union, what you're going back to strategy. Was it during the day day? You don't want a changing out team on that 10 a.m. Oh, yeah. if it's during well, the J day, oh, I'm in. I got free time all day long. If it's during the day, I could do it. And that doesn't, I don't even care what day it is, as long as it's daytime. So I like, Mr. Chairman, would you accept a motion? I think I know what's coming. Yes, I'd yeah. like to make a motion that uh, as a select board, we um, put forward Katie Young as the potential select board representative from the region for the QRSD collective bargaining. Motion's made. 
second. second. And second. Yeah. Any discussion? I have a discussion. As long as it's during the day. Yep. If we, it's at night, I can't. We I'm can out. work together. I'll send an email in the okay. morning with UCC'd on it right. to just get the wheels turning. Yeah, I just don't want to put everybody's hopes so on. Sure you could, can do oh, it. if it's during the day, yeah. Okay. All day long, yeah. All right. Yeah. And, uh, no further discussion. So they haven't negotiated at all yet. On oh, the they've done, I'm sure so they've done what, most of the negotiating. What's the union looking for? It seems like it's a final vote. So what are the union looking they've for? They've been holding. Percentage. We don't know that every meeting that they've had is an executive session. That's yeah, they fine. can't release that. In. Oh, it would be. So I'm walking it. It would be, be pretty bad bargaining. So what's so the point of? Are they waiting the commitment? Yeah. Well, Usually it's common knowledge when the union makes a proposal for what they're looking for. Everything of the last couple meetings have been a request to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. Secret stuff. But have they actually negotiated with the union, or There's it's just the unions. strategy on behalf of the? Well, at yeah. what point are we like behind on getting a representative right. Right. onto collective bargaining, and like they're already rolling, or are they simply just having the school committee come up with strategy on what they'd like to do before they charge the subcommittee for sorry. collective bargaining? Yeah, sorry, even with their feet. Uh, the original email is from Friday, March 10th. Okay. It says, Dear select board members, as you are aware, state statute allows select board members of the five district towns to select one individual select board member to serve with the Quabbin Regional School District School Committee in the collective bargaining process. We have a number of contracts that will expire in June of 2023 and have begun our work in this area. We expect to engage the municipal representative in negoti negotiations in the very near future. I trust select boards will appoint an individual select board member from one of the towns to serve in this capacity. Please notify Jessica Bennett if you would like to do so. So it's only one town? It's one, 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 one representative from For all, all of the five select towns. Yes. Then on okay. March 17th, she said, I'm following up on this request. Again, one delegate decided on by the five district towns needs to be chosen to participate in collective bargaining process. We are hoping to bring the QRTA contract to the full school committee for ratica ratification as early as April 6th. So that makes me wow. believe that they're already yeah, this, they're, 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 already like they're, yeah. they're well into it already. As soon as possible. Then Get the, the town of Hardwick has chosen not to participate. Therefore, a representative from one of the four remaining towns will be chosen. The, later in an email, Town of Oakham. So also they've already been negotiating that. Yeah. Very much. So what is the purpose of this committee? I don't understand that. If they're already in the negotiation. Seems like it's more to put on the paper that they were present. Yeah. So I think yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. at this point it behooves us regardless to try to get in there for whatever we can get in, wherever we can get in. Yeah. But other town other districts, what they've done is the school district was a little more engaged. They didn't just send an email. They said, we're going to have a joint meeting. All of you people send one person from every select board. We'll meet, and you all can tell me who you want. Yeah. Well, this so. is consistent with yeah. everything else that has proceeded. <laughs> They've already got their mind uh, up anyway. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I, I'd like to, uh, without well, adding. has been made in a second you. already. So any more discussion on this? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, and, uh, um, I think, all right. All in favor? Aye. Yes. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. And yeah. Keep us posted. I <laughs> will do my best. <laughs> See if you, you have know. any competition from Barry yeah, or uh, the, the whatever. If we do, we do. Whoever else is okay. Yeah. Okay, item D, authorization of an intermunicipal agreement between City Gardner, Gardner and Town of Hubbardston for Animal Control Services. Nate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is the same as our previous intermunicipal agreement with a 2% increase year over year. Uh, Heather had also mentioned that we want to change per our changes from Board of Selectmen to Select Board, which I will do and I don't believe there will be any problems, and there's also a Scrivener's error in the date. So I will have Scrivener's, not Scrivener's. I mean, That's okay. And in that, that same section, uh, it just doesn't read straight with Select Board and Hubbard C. Yeah. Just make sure it's in English. I, I will Good. go through and fix that prior to signing anything the mayor of Gardner received city council approval at last night's meeting of the city council so okay. who else is part of this agreement right now Barry I don't think anybody it's just Gardner it's just Gardner I think it's just us uh, no who else is part of the regional animal control services so we just have a single IMA with Gardner but Gardner doesn't serve just the town of Gardner Hollison. serves Templeton as well in Ashburnham 
They that, do. That might not be a change. thing anymore. They got rid of it? I, okay. It may be. I can look into and they that don't, for you. No, they don't do Barry because Rutland does Barry. Barry's too far. Okay. I was just wondering how far they're splitting their people. Their people. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, would you accept oh. a motion? To have the, for the TA to sign a contract with the City of Garden, yes. So moved. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that okay. we authorize the town administrator to sign the IMA uh, for animal control services with the City of Gardner for the contract term of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2026. Motion made. Second. And second. Discussion. Go ahead. Um, is this contract for one employee? Three. Three. Is there any division of time? Any? contractual division of time how many hours these three people would be spending in each participating town I do not believe so I think it's based on emergency services when there is an issue involving an animal control situation they go to that town and they get called in and it all runs through the dispatch in the city of Gardner they also do barn inspections yeah they do, like they do barn they inspections, inspections. They, they do the kennel inspections they but the, the majority of it is for the emergency yeah. services with the... We don't have to buy a vehicle this year, right? No. No. Okay. Has, has, are you done, Chris? Mm -hmm. Has there ever been an issue with them where they couldn't come to the town, where they were tied up in other towns? Not that I have heard of. No. I've called them on Sunday before for random dogs in the neighborhood, and within an hour, hour and a half on the Sunday, they showed up. Excellent. That's all I needed to know. They inspect my kennel very professionally. They really? Good job. Awesome. Good to hear. Any further questions? Okay. Then we'll, we'll vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Yes. 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 Opposed? Oh, Stain. Motion carried. Uh, Sue, why don't you come up and join oh, us at this really? point? Okay. Uh, and if you will. I may as well. And Nick, we, I'm sorry. Yes, you too. Yeah. And Sue, call, call your name to order. <laughs> you too. Get him a name plate. Yeah. Get him a name plate. <laughs> Jeff, that's your job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need all our words and name plates. All right. 712. Calling our meeting to order. <laughs> From the finance committee. All right. For all yours. Okay. Turn it over to me. One second. Yeah. Yeah, I can click on it. I can always click on it here. I can always click on it here, but I can see up there. Oh, no, I can see that. Should I move? No, nope, you're fine. Well, you're good, but I can also see it right there. I can follow along with it. I just have problems with small print. All right, me members too. of the select board and finance committee, thank you for having me this evening to present my first town administrator's operating capital budget as town administrator here in the town of and again, I thank you for all of your individual work up to this point. Everybody has answered their phones and emails and been readily available, whether it was a question on institutional knowledge or, hey, why are we paying this? And it's been awesome thus far. The, but I unfortunately am going to note that that's where the awesomeness ends and after, after this. It gets a little more itchy. itchy. Yeah. Yep. There are many people I'd like to thank for helping me with this budget, including the town's dedicated department heads, elected officials, and volunteers. I would like to give a special thanks to our finance team and past treasurer collector Sandy Nason, who was a big hand to me even on her way out the door. She helped with every aspect that I asked her to, and Kelly Punch. Ponty Briand? Yeah. I've never said Kelly's last um, name out loud. I uh, yeah, don't no. I, I can read it. I yeah, can't I say can it. Read. So thank you. She's been great as well. They the whole finance team has been wonderful. Tony has helped a lot with all of this as well, so I thank her as well. Here are some budget highlights. Based on revenue and expenditure projections, as well as the use of one-time funds, the budget is balanced. Many of my predecessors in the past have kind of low certain numbers to get it to a 
a budget that did not use one-time free cash. I feel like we are past the point that that was an opportunity that I could realistically make with our decision as a community to use free cash at special town meeting last year. It creates a reliancy year after year after year once you do it, but prior to actually using free cash in your operating budget, you can sort of rob Peter to pay Paul to get by and patch it year to year. This budget supports a municipal government that is focused on providing level services and is aligned with the community's values and the goals of the select board. Uh, you're going to hear me a few times this evening point that even though there is an increase, there is by no means a substantial increase on the municipal side of this budget. The increase of three point I believe 3.27 overall is due to large increases in education and health care and retirement. The department heads have been putting together level funded budgets with only asks that are actually needed to provide a service or contractually obligated. Here is a revenue analysis. We have gone up slightly since last year, FY23, approximately 3.82. That is with numbers that are very preliminary. We are still waiting to see where a lot of our local receipts will come in. State aid still has to go through both the House budget session and the Senate budget session before being finalized by Governor Healy, so this is still a very early on. It's unfortunate that we, as a municipality, and we're not alone, have to wait until the kind of last minute as we approach July 1 to know what our actual numbers are going to be. Expenditures continue to grow, and it is not being helped at all by the national situation that's going on and prices of everything rising. The general government budget that I'm proposing goes up 0.68%. The public safety budget 1.45%. The education budget 5.64%. Public works 2.40%. Human services 0.68%. Culture and Recreation, 1.03%. Debt at a negative 56.75%, which is something that we will be discussing in a, fur in a future slide that will, I will need likely a vote or at least a, a nudge in a certain direction to continue moving forward, and we can talk about that in a little bit. Our assessments went down 0.66% in unclassified, which will be the health care and the retirement, uh, are going up 17.03%. Those numbers are a little more steady than other numbers because we already did receive an assessment from the retirement and the health care companies. That doesn't mean that things cannot change, but they're usually able to be taken at their word fairly early. Some of the service additions that I have placed into this proposed budget is a $10,000 classification and co compensation survey upgrade, update, not upgrade, which would update our 2019 compensation and classification survey with the state of employment in the public and private sector. It is getting more and more challenging to recruit and keep good employees. So I want to make sure that we're at least aware of what a competitive salary would be for the type of employees we have. <coughs> we have a lot of really good qualified employees. I would like to be able to update the class classification and compensation survey to today's standards, both regionally and internally. This is something that we it's best practice to do it every five years, but with COVID, it changed a lot more drastically than usually would in a five-year period. The new TASER contract within the police budget is actually a $12,000 hit, but the 
police chief was able to move some things around to make it approximately a $2,000 increase. This is due to a change in the contracts that we have with Axon or Taser. Previously, the contract did not buy all of the parts and I'm thinking plugs and all that stuff that is with the tasers and this new contract will. With that came a significant increase year over year. The police chief was able to kind of backload the contract, which you will be able to see in the long form version of the budget, budget book, to get a discounted rate in the first year or two, and it increases in the latter part of the contract. The accountant had requested that her travel reimbursement be brought back into the budget. It's something that I am at least willing to discuss. All of the other communities that our shared accountant worked for do provide her with a travel reimbursement, so we can, it's something we can talk about. If it doesn't end up in the final budget, I'm sure I can speak with the accountant regarding that, and she won't be too upset to see it go, but it's something that I wanted to make sure that she knew I was putting in here to try to get for her. Additionally, there is a assessor slash admin clerk. Basically what happened here is RRG, our assessor, would like us to take back the position currently filled by a, a woman named Jenny. She is doing the work but is not here a large amount of time. It results in constituent strain with the assessor's department and creates unnecessary issues. So at that at that point when it had come up a couple of times, RRG had reached out to me and said, hey, is there any way that the town could take back funding this position? With knowing that that position was approximately eight to ten thousand dollars i wanted to propose combining it with the 10 hours that tony the executive assistant is no longer going to be doing some of the things i am proposing in the long form version of the budget are project management hr assistance assistance with grant writing and management of the and being the clerk for the assessor's office. The final item on this service editions list is the transition from land use clerk to part-time planner. We have great opportunities within planning, zoning, and economic development that fall directly in line with select board goals, but in order to be able to to seek out those opportunities, apply for grants, and just really keep up with the other municipalities, we will need to compensate our land use clerk better than he currently is compensating, being compensated. I understand that certain members of the board are not of the idea that you should be changing positions based on incumbents, but we do have one heck of a land use clerk who has gone out of his way time and time and time again to ensure that we are doing our due diligence when it comes to land use and planning. He actually wrote with my office a, a grant proposal that we submitted last week for two different projects that I will bring up in my town administrator's report after this. Nate, do you want questions on that right now or do you want me to hold them to the end? Can we hold them until the end? I will do my best. All right. I'm just going to have a whole list. You know that, right? I'm aware. Okay. <laughs> Start writing. <laughs> the capital budget has only been decreased from since our last time speaking on this matter because the fire truck is going to be more expensive than Chief Hayes had originally thought it would be so I re the ambulance? oh yeah the ambulance my okay. apologies nope. the the ambulance yeah. that's funded through potentially the capital improvement plan ARPA and ARPA funds mm -hmm. 
Everything else is the exact same as it was before with $10,000 being removed from additional road repair to make all the numbers work. Once I found out that what was proposed to me from previous members of the finance committee in terms of using debt to pay off an item without debt paperwork was not appropriate. So I removed that and we can discuss further during question times or as the season progresses. Here's the elephant in the room. The, I'm using 6% as a number. Realistically, we could take a 4.5% increase on the chin without using free cash to supplement our budget. To the, on the right side of the screen is different variable percentages, different from FY23 at different rates. Right now, the Quabbin Regional School District is, has us at a 14.6% increase, which would be just short of $800,000 over FY23. Even though they are stating point blank that that is obviously not the final number, that is the number they are giving us right now. That is not a number I could reasonably budget with. It would, it, it, we couldn't do it. We, <coughs> we could not conceivably put 14.6% in there. So I'm hoping that as we get closer and closer and closer to the end of the year with more input from us and numbers being finalized, this number comes much closer to what I am projecting versus what is currently being projected by, by the school system. It's incredibly challenging. As you all know, I'm preaching to the choir here to be told that the numbers are going up with 88% of, of annual growth. Like that is an actual number. And with the way it's written right now, the Quabbin Regional School District would be using 88% of all new monies. So, and if it goes up too much higher, then that would make us have to make more difficult and more difficult choices, even going as far as potentially pushing a two and a half override into, into this year. I'm hoping that with working with the school committee and with the office of the superintendent, that that's not something we have to look into moving forward, but we do have to be prepared for, for those type of events. Here is a, on the screen is a review of the next five years with the numbers from the proposal placed within the chart. It is very similar to other years with our revenue streams going up approximately 2% to 3% year over year. And state aid is the same. Here's a five year projection with the new numbers in. It's also in your, in your long form budget proposal if you cannot see this, but it brings, it projects out five years in all of the different expenditure categories as well as revenue less expense showing us what our current structural deficit is running around at. You can see the 82,554 is what I have proposed here today, but there is a variable in that. And what I want the people here and the people at home to remember that a financial forecast is purposely vague, where you bring your your revenues are anticipated down and your expenditures are anticipated up. So those numbers, at least from FY25 on, would be a bad day and not necessarily what would come to fruition as we move through the budget process. Oh no. One second. 
Tony was in the way. Yep, Tony was in the way. All right, let's go. Sorry. Here is what I've kind of been alluding to throughout my presentation. The quote budget for FY24 by myself is balanced by $116,753 that will be expiring this year and $82,554.03 in free cash. To aid in further understanding of this issue, I have provided three examples here on the screen. Basically what is happening here and my predecessors have been talking about this for a number of years is we have to make a choice on what to do with approximately $116,000. The way I have it written up right now is to put it all back into the operating. The downfall of that is that it would then be incredibly difficult to get money for capital for large-scale capital projects such as fire trucks and public safety buildings down the road without votes or serious sacrifice. Nate, can you back up and explain that a little bit for folks at home? So when we're talking about expiring debt in this case and $116,000, can you explain a little bit more precisely what you're talking about? Yes, approximately 10 years ago there was a roads project that was taken on by the town. I don't remember exactly how much, but it was a multi-million dollar project that went about 10 years out over the 10 years. We paid it at $180,000 a year. So now that that, in, in FY 2023, 20, fiscal year 23, the last $180,000 payment was made to kind of finish off paying that bond. With that being said, the number is lower than 180 because we also have payments that we have to make in principal and interest to the new school roof project that has yet to even be bonded. So that number, those numbers were taken right off the top, leaving us with the approximately $117,000 that we're looking at right now. And that one seventeen, that was all within um, yeah. our operating budget. Yeah, it was all we did not do debt exclusions or nope. capital exclusions for that. No, ma'am. Okay. So what we did is we essentially said, okay, this item is done. This money is all set. We don't need to keep budgeting for this because we're no longer paying this. So let's take that out of the budget document and let's put the money where we need the money. Yeah, that's the way it is written right now. Okay. And that is proposal one, okay. which we're speaking of right now. Proposal number two, which would drastically increase our deficit. What the bottom lines I would like people to kind of keep an eye on are what these different choices would do to the structural deficit. Like this one where all of the money was essentially rolled into the budget obviously brings the deficit down the most and leaves us with approximately $50,808 in free cash and allowing us to place $100,000 in our reserve accounts, thus following our financial policies. Here, this would be the all debt proposal where we choose to either take on debt for a project such as a fire truck or make a one-time payment on another debt line item to buy us a little time. But here we would be making a large devotion to our future cap capital needs. But with that being said, it would severely increase the, the deficit in the bottom line, and we would have to move around approximately $16,000, either from potential reserves or in cuts. The third okay. option... So going back to the one real quick, Nate, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. So this proposal is you take that 116 that you previously took out and put it towards something else. Yep. You leave it where it is and you pay for debt of some fashion, debt either some something fashion. new or something currently there to do another payment. Mm -hmm. But doing so 
would mean that we either have to go back to our operating budget and reduce lines for yeah. expenses, yes. or alternatively su supplement with additional free cash to cover the cost. Well, there would be no Difference. more additional free cash. We would have to move it around okay. from the from the other proposed okay. uses. uses. And the third option that I'm putting out was what I would call the hybrid option, which would be keeping $50,000 in in the debt line items to either make a payment or take on some sort of some sort of debt i can if this is the chosen path we take i can work with <coughs> our financial advisors to figure out exactly the number but i wanted to use a nice round number here this evening so i chose fifty thousand dollars and that would be our number that we need in in free cash would go up but it would still allow us to have some free cash going into the next year, make a make a payment into our reserve accounts, and continue not crazy far off of what we would be in other situations while still maintaining some sort of commitment to our capital expenditures moving forward. Okay. So those are the three options. In yep. your opinion, Nate, what is your recommendation to the select board of those three? My recommendation to the select board, even though I wrote it out in, in A, is the hybrid, op hybrid option, is figuring out what kind of project we could take on, whether it be the new fire truck or something that has yet to be proposed yet, but I believe the, this board and this town has spent too many years kind of chugging along with the capital improvement plan to, the, to now go and say, hey, you know what, like, and the, op, the deficit, we are kind of in no matter what. Like, there needs to be a larger a larger fix or an opportunity to actually get us out of that and it is my opinion that completely throwing away our capital expenditure ease would be foolish and we could talk about this actually is this I, there are a couple more slides but I feel like this would be an appropriate place mm -hmm. to pause for questions comments concerns so if we paid 50 grand off on something, in theory, you'd have the 50 grand still in the operating budget for loans, but would that put another 50 grand in the next year anyway, and we'd be back to almost 100? No. Do you follow my thought it process? Would. No, okay. All you'd right. be spending it, go by. You'd be spending it, yeah. it, would, okay. it would go away, and then next year we would be either a fire truck or whatever the board and the finance committee and well, I'm just thinking if, if we bought something that was 50 grand off the capital improvement that's coming up. Truck. Yes, like a vehicle like of some sort. Like an F-250. Yeah, and that would free up 50 grand. Do you understand where I'm, where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. And it would still almost keep that line pretty well equal. And then that way we would... I'd have to look into le the legality of it because that's what I did with the... Uh, with the Main Street paving for the fire department and why it's no longer on the capital improvement plan. And then David from Unibank told me that we cannot just make willy-nilly payments out of the deadline. <coughs> it would either have to be towards something. That's what I mean, towards the truck. But we don't have a bond out for right. said truck. Uh, oh, okay, so we couldn't buy something that we don't have a bond on. It would have yes. to be paying. At something least we in his opinion. Bond. Okay, all right. So I guess my only And this isn't something that we need to have an answer on tonight. We can continue moving through the budgetary process and see how different items come to fruition and then make a decision. And there is room for additional hybrid opportunities. If fifty thousand dollars is too little or too much, we can someone can make a proposal and we and I have no problem drafting up multiple budgets, doing multiple 
different uses for this expiring funds, but I didn't want to go too far into the budget season without us kind of putting it in front of us. Nate, can you go back two slides, please? Two? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was the original proposal here, right? So with this one you have FY24 recommend capital would be $360,000 that we would expect, yeah. right? So we keep having these conversations, you know, week after week, month after month. We don't have a lot of money to play with. And it's great that we're funding our capital within our operating budget, but we have expanding personnel needs just to pay people a living wage that we need to take care of. Mm -hmm. And by switching some of this money over back to the general expense side, it's not ideal because it's not growing the capital, but we talk about this time and time again. It's great to have new equipment. It's fantastic. Too bad we have no one to drive it, right? So I think, <coughs> it, I think it's still something we got to figure out at the end of the day. But in my mind, I'd rather put the money back into the operating budget to get services back out to the people, to get staff, to get personnel, to make sure that we can have people here to be able to provide services right. Let's remember to the town. Let's remember that it's 100% eaten by our education line. This just goes, oh, here's 116, yeah. boom, gone. And, and it's our other funds that we're using to bring mm -hmm. bring it back up. I, I like what you're saying, Heather, and I agree with you completely, but at the same time, I've also lived in this town a very long time and have seen some ridiculously old equipment that the employees hate fighting with to try to get to work. That is demoralizing. Yeah. Um, so if we don't have the equipment, it's it's which came first, the chicken or the egg? Do you want the employees or do you want the, the equipment for them to actually use? You need both. So right. I, I agree right. what you're saying, but we gotta keep this capital stuff being able to like fix and remodel and move forward or else we're gonna be back where we were where we were just in it up to our eyeballs and everything's falling apart. How have we done in the past? Do we have a track record on a history of debt or capital exclusions for the town? You can make one. For stuff? Well, you know, just get a DLS website. Yeah. It'll give you a history of any override vote that's ever happened. None. No, it's not true. No, we can't. And we've approved we things. We've like yeah. yeah. no, yeah. yeah. got a debt exclusion. Yeah. yeah. There's been debt exclusion. One or two of them. Yeah. yeah. So capital is like a one time, one year one. project. Yep. Yeah. But my yeah. only question is, right? So we know at some point we're going to have to go to the people for more money question is how do we do it right do we go to people for more money for everything and just say override our entire budget or do we say you know what let's start transitioning out capital from that and give people the support buying X buying Y and I know it's not a conversation for this evening but my concern is that we have such a large number for money for capital within the budget I get what you're saying need the concern that the school is going to see the number and just say thank you very much it's very nice of you to free up that fund but well, it's not even them saying that's what that's will what happen. they do. Like. But I mean, at the end of the day, we still have to try to do the best we can for Absolutely. our, our townspeople and our personnel. What was the capital budget amount again? That we was it three eighty? Three eighty. I'm I miswrote three sixty right there. Oh, okay. I mean the the at the six percent level. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Roughly each percent is roughly fifty thousand dollars, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, around that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there's not, like, let's remember it as well that I have this budget proposal with the school at six percent. If yeah. if we do all this and they come in at eight, that's mm -hmm. all goes out the window. That goes out the window anyway. Yeah, you might not need the equipment because you won't have anybody to run. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's a scare. That is a real thought. Yeah. We've had and this. they don't care whether you get to cut police, fire, yep. or whatever. They don't care. Yep. And let's and for, for discussion purposes, just let's let's say that that happens. What does that do to your three recommendations? Throws them out the window. It's not again. So the yeah, hybrid yeah, is well, not I, in. I, the right. hybrid could still be in, dependent on how much it went the other direction. Like if they come in and say 8.5 is the final, that's the money where we're taking that from to go back to not have to go to the taxpayers this year. And well, the reason I'm asking is in the 10 years I've been on, on the board, I've never seen the school department come to us, meaning matching what, uh, what we needed. Yeah. We've always had to go to them, and that's what was going up. So my feeling is 
that whatever that comes down is not going to be what what we can afford and what we want. Oh. So I don't think we should re realistically budget for that because, as I said, the ten years I've been here, it, it's never happened. <laughs> Regardless of what <clears throat> the actual budgetary figures come out to be, I do believe that there has to be a decision made regarding moving forward with whatever this number may be. Even if we agree, if, if it goes up and it ends up being only $80,000, we still have to figure out what that means. Do we want to move forward with some debt in our, in our line items? Do we want to use it to push the structural deficit off a few more years? No matter what, that's still, that's still looming. This isn't enough to say goodbye to that. Or do we exasperate the whole issue and just keep it all in debt? talk about it at the end and I can finish this unless anybody else why don't we uh, not to, why don't we make an investment into the tax titles and sell some property so I think that's a different conversation yeah, that, and that is a that is a that's priority a that was conversation I actually have a meeting with with Mark I just wanted to put it out there I have, a, I have a meeting with Mark tomorrow to talk about surplus lands 1030 yeah I was thinking about taking some of that <coughs> freeing up your money there and, you know we got we're holding a lot of properties and because we don't want to spend a five thousand each property to process it mm -hmm. well let's dump them make an investment in that and dump the properties That's i know it's only a quick fix but you know at least somebody will get the paycheck they deserve or whatever and that's something we can look into a wouldn't have any answers for you this right. evening. I just want to. It's also it. not going to give us any additional money anytime soon, right? No. Because even if we do auction off a property, it's something it comes for in as free cash. Yeah. What's the dollar? Yeah. Something for How thought. How much money are we talking? I don't. Know. Do we know how many about, how really many something. properties the town currently? Not has off the set. top of my head. A lot we, of the properties do. are landlocked, like yeah. little parcels, like ten acres, but five still acres auction out in the middle. Neighbors might want yeah. them. but you'd get. But so, still rolls them back so the taxes 20, the 26 cents. acres every time going around is $63 in tax, like landlocked land. 20, 26 acres is $63, I believe, is yeah. what I pay for landlocked land. Okay. What's so, the valuation of that property? What's it um, worth? I think it's evaluated at like 30 grand. 60 grand, something okay. like that. It's landlocked land, 26 you acres out in the middle of the woods, landlocked. So you can't get to it. And that's what, and I'm not saying they're all like that. There are some that are better. And a neighbor might want to buy the parcel next to it. It was just something I wanted to put out there for yeah, thought sure. yeah. in the future. You know, I, know, I understand mm -hmm. it's, you're talking probably years down the road before you see anything. You know what I mean? But it could be a new contract negotiation for QRSD. But I think we also have to realize, but just on the discussion too, that two and a half has to be in our plans. Yes, it has to be. We're in, we're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that is in my long form proposal. I do not announce, but I do state in multiple places that within the next six months we will be, we will be coming forward with a an action plan, potentially a committee to drive this with some. Yeah. But we also have got to have a plan. If that doesn't go through, yeah. you got to have another plan. So, yeah, it is what it is. So this is not something that I was anticipating a vote on this evening, but my predecessors had been speaking about it for years, saying year after year that in 2024 we're going to have to make a choice. <coughs> Here we are, 2024. We're going to have to make a choice between capital operating or some sort of mission. Well, since you got to ask the taxpayers one way or another for something, I would put it all in operating. And that is the way that I have it written up on the screen yeah. right now. As yeah. an overview, the only mistake on there is the it's 380 in cap in capital instead of 360. Oh, yeah, I see that. Now. Other than that, we meet all of our financial goals, use a limited amount of free cash, very similar to the amount we used is last the, year. Is the free cash surplus deficit line item there still correct then with 380? 
is is it just a it would a be typo? twenty twenty thousand dollars oh it is oh so yeah. the math 8, is the math yeah. is wrong yeah. Yeah. okay it would all be right. twenty thousand dollars less so okay. eighty thousand eighty thousand dollars oh all right okay eighty eight eighteen rolling over to okay FY twenty five which is still more than we rolled over this year that's right we rolled over approximately seventy five thousand dollars right FY twenty three right okay. What's next? You all know because you've done this more times than I have. But a public hearing and communications campaign, campaign on the budget proposal, final budget revisions based on suggestions from the select board, finance committee, and the public. We'll hold a number of meetings with the finance committee and a number of public hearings to get input on it. Then the select board votes and makes changes and approves a proposed budget for FY24. Then the FY24 budget is then brought to the Finance Committee and to the residents at Annual Town Meeting on June 6th. All right, you ready for questions, Nate? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there actually, I don't have too many, surprisingly. Um, so under the select board line, so you're requesting $10,000 for a non-union classification compensation study. Yeah. Where the number 10K come from? Because the one I did in Princeton was eight, and we're a little bigger than that. Oh, it was only okay. I haven't seen any under 18K, so. It for a new one. I believe the updates are slightly cheaper, but I can look okay. into that. All right. So, and that would include the scope of getting all the scoring mechanisms, mm -hmm. so that in the event anything changed, for we'd be able to apply. That, yes. Okay. Um, assessors, so ROG, where are we, we have a contract with them? Yeah, there's one more year. There's one more, so FY24 is the last year. Yeah, and I'm meeting with the assessors in the coming weeks to determine where their minds are at with that. But as I'm sure you know, as someone who's worked in many small municipalities, it is easier to, it's the devil you know. Mm -hmm. And because it is very difficult to find an option that is not RRG or almost nothing. Okay. Land use position. Hmm. We knew it was going to be this one. Yeah. And, I, and I, do have, I do have draft job descriptions for both of the positions proposed okay. that will be brought out over the budget process. So it sounds like to me what you're proposing here, if I understand this correctly, is you would like to revise the job description to reflect the role and the activities that the current person in that position is currently doing, and with such, you'd like to propose a title change for that position? Yes. Okay. And if I understood you correct, the amount change here would be a $1,000 increase? Yeah, in, if, in the actual line item. Okay. So but a thousand dollars so uh, Bob in the position, it's not Bob, but I like Bob. Yep. Bob would get a thousand dollars more next year for additional job responsibilities and a change of title. Yes. What's What's Bob Bob getting? No, he, he would What's he would Bob get he would get significantly more, but with I all of the paid. with all of the positions rolling yeah. around, that's why there is the ten thousand for the other position, because I believe Tony's current hours are in the planning board. I thought we were adding her hours to the assessor people. Combining these hours with the 10 administrative hours not being worked to create a more appealing open position in assessors 141. Yes. So is that the same 10 hours or is that a different 10 hours? Let me get back to you. Okay. Okay. So I guess my question. I will, I will clarify the hours and the impact of the of the proposed service additions. Okay, so on the land use position, right? So we have a wage and comp chart currently. Yes. So we know where this person currently falls on the wage and comp chart based on their land use clerk position. Mm -hmm. So I assume in moving them to the part-time planner, is that the same number of hours or is that additional hours? It would be the same number of hours at a slightly higher rate. Okay, so since this wasn't a position we had previously on the wage and comp chart, how did you go about determining where it should be on the wage and comp chart? I looked into, I have a whole file on this. I looked at an, a couple of part-time planner positions and I can provide that information at, at, a, soon, okay. at a meeting upcoming. I do 
not have it in front of us today unless I open my oh. emails. But would the person fall on the wage and comp chart comparable to other people in our organization that have similar responsibilities, education, et cetera, yes. et cetera, so that we wouldn't be paying this person, although, you know, on par with other part-time planners around, but, you know, make yes. sure that they're still in the range with our own people. Absolutely, and this is very much the, the first <laughs> proposal here we're at the very beginning of the of the budgetary season I can clarify all of this for for everybody as we move forward okay may I ask more follow-up questions yes no. <laughs> sorry sorry Susan so in regards to this part-time planner position so what is the plan in the event that the planner departs we would hire a new part-time planner in hopes that they would have either the same sort of qualifications and skills or a different set of qualifications and skills possibly in economic development or in GIS. The plan would be to continue to use them as a part-time planner, but maybe that their skill set is not the same as the incumbents in water land use, or what we would do our best to find somebody that does have another relevant skill set. Okay, so changing from the land use clerk to the part-time planner, does that increase the services provided to our residents? Absolutely. Okay, if the part-time planner leaves and we can't find someone with equal qualifications to take the position, are we then unfortunately going to be reducing the services to the residents as a result? Because part-time planners are um, not easy to come by. They're not. My second witness here is the chair of the planning board, so maybe. <laughs> I, I've had these conversations with the uh, so-called chair of the planning board, um, and they go very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Nate, for the answers to those questions. Um, last one I have <coughs> under unclassified. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as unemployment goes, so it looks like we've been budgeting 15K for the past couple of years. Do we know what our, and you may not have this answer in front of you, can we find out what the actuals have been? Yes. Because a lot of times. It's 12. Okay. So we paid 12,000 in unemployment for someone this year. I can get you that okay. actual number. And to see if it's something that's like unusual or something that's normal because a lot of towns don't come close to spending that yeah. and also well never mind remind me offline to talk about making sure that we have the three categories who aren't eligible not being reported because that costs us a lot of money in towns that's all I have for questions Good. Any further questions from anyone on the select board or finance committee at this time? They all have the same ones. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. They were all asked and answered. We're all um, thinking on that, you know, on our lines. <coughs> Can you remind us all, but mostly me, as to the schedule, the calendar, the timeline? In other words, when should the finance committee next week? for all warranted articles is at our next meeting. Okay. She's got it in front of her. Yeah. All right. And we can schedule. I can meet with you with any relevant department heads that you would like to meet in the, in the next two weeks if you would like. That's the, that's the, um, is that a uh, select board meeting yeah. that you're yeah, inviting? That's, that's, that's our next meeting. Come. That's yeah. next week? It's two no, weeks from two yesterday, weeks. Two weeks. but you wouldn't right. necessarily need to be there as the okay. finance committee because it, the closing of the warrant is simply a vote of the select exactly. board. Exactly, yeah. No, that's, you're inviting us, but that's not something we need to, yeah. you need us there for. Okay. So... In other words, then the next the next expectation is is a a finance committee is April eighteenth. The hearing. The hearing. Yeah. For our for the, the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and we can change that date if we if, if we see fit. This was made months ago. If that's not a date that works for for your committee, we can move it around to make it work. I would like it to make it a, to move it around to make it work if right. we can. Yeah, we let's talk about that offline, Madam okay. Chair. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? You have more to. Uh... I do not. Thank you okay. for hearing my proposal this evening. I appreciate your questions and I look forward to working with you all as we move towards <coughs> annual town meeting in June. Uh, any questions at any time, you all know how to reach me. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. All right. No Good. more business before the Finance Committee. Motion to adjourn. Am I supposed to hear yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned at 8 p.m. Okay. Moving to the town TA report. Oh, me? Yes. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. It's all you. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm keeping it short this week because I did put a lot of my bandwidth into writing and thinking about the budget and welcoming Mary to our team. So with that, I, we welcomed Mary Markowski as treasurer collector to our team on Monday. Uh, most of you, the four out of five of you saw her yesterday at the police chief swearing in ceremony, which was very nice and well attended. We've been getting a lot of compliments on that. I would like to thank the ladies from the Senior Center, Tony, Bobby, and Nancy for their work putting that all together. They, I would have not made it look anywhere near as nice, so I was happy that I, that they were able to all chip Susan in. Susan and Lorraine from the Senior Center. Susan and Lorraine that, from the Senior Center. That is they did a great job. Yes. Those were the masterminds behind all of the food and decorations at yesterday's event. We will be hosting, holding open gov training for the building department next week and the following week to attempt to bring our building department back up to the standard that it has been in the past and will be in the future. I had a very straight and forward conversation with open gov about how if this did not get fixed we would be seeking another vendor in another year not looking to to fix the problem i began today holding goal sessions with several employees that'll go for approximately the next three weeks and then at some point <coughs> in april i will have a department goals presentation to bring bring forward to the select board that will likely be around the same time as my entry report which I am currently scheduling for April 17th. The 100 days has now passed so I am compiling my data and looking forward to bringing that presentation to you guys <clears throat> likely at your meeting of April 17th. I'm going to do a lot of talking <laughs> over, over yes. the next couple months. I, I can I hosted town clerk Kristen Foster on my mini television program, Hubberson Headlines, uh, approximately two weeks ago. She did a wonderful job and she announced that nomination papers will be available for the spring 2023 annual town election this coming Monday, March 27th. They're open for a couple weeks. People watching from home can learn more about the different opportunities and timelines for those on the town website and as part of the budget. I held a meeting of the chairs meeting approximately a week ago and it was it was wonderful. I learned a lot. There was a lot of there was a lot of back and forth between chairs. I think that it was actually quite beneficial to have and we will have them again in the future, not too too often because I don't want to be taking up too much of the chair's time. But they, they did comment up. that they we're glad that you've had something like that. Good. They did comment that, so and wanted to do it again. So yeah, that's good. we'll do it again. I'm thinking probably every other month or quarterly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that is about it for right now. I will have a full written report on the website within a day. Thank okay. you. Thank you. 
That brings us to policies to review. I don't believe we have any. Okay. Matt is not reasonably anticipated by the chair. I don't have any. Does anybody have anything to bring up? I had a question. Go. Has to do with Zoom. How are meetings? Because I know that's coming up to an end. So what's going on with Zoom meetings? Are they going to be allowed? Not allowed? What hybrids? There may be a item on your next agenda regarding that. Okay. I am doing research into the way in which the Hubbardson Select Board accepted the remote participation, the remote participation okay. rules. Okay. So, and we may bring it up at the next meeting. Okay. So we don't have an answer quite yet. So there's legislation that was filed to extend again. The, yes, to okay. extend things the way they are now until the end of March of 2025. Really. However. Whether or not that clears all of the hurdles it has to clear prior to March 31st of 2023 yeah. is yet to be seen. Mm -hmm. So precautionary measures <coughs> suggest that we look at adopting remote participation. Remote participation was the old rule prior to the ability to um, just do remote or hybrid meetings. What it requires is you have to have a majority of your board present so you have to have a quorum so like three of us would have to be present and then two people could participate on zoom and that would be fine you have to do it because you have a geographic distance or an illness like there's certain reasons mm -hmm. but Nate's point is there is legislate that you have to accept the town has to accept in some fashion mm -hmm. usually the select board has to accept but that's going back a long time yeah. so whether or not we actually did and even if we didn't we need to do it now he just needs to understand the ins and outs and how to do it. But a main meeting would have to be in person. Okay. The quorum of the body would have to be in person. physically present. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so and that's it, a difference. It, it, this, uh, is this because the governor's ending COVID emergency? Well, and, and the, you, the remote guidance would have ended at the end of March regardless. And yeah. it actually ended approximately a year ago and then was extended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and they waited until the until eleven fifty nine to do it at that time. So the, so this doesn't mean that it's not going to get extended just because it is now the twenty first of March. Right. A week and and prior to prior to COVID, did you have remote? Is that what you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, there was remote. She was explaining. There was yeah. remote okay. participation, but it you had to be you had to have the quorum physically present to be able to do it. Yeah, and there was only certain reasons you could do it. Kind of like the difference between absentee voting versus, um, uh, help me. In person. Oh. Absentee yeah. versus mail-in. Was that more, more for the select board or more for the people? It was for the select, no, no. This remote participation was truly just for the board's members to participate. Okay. It had nothing to but do with uh, any of the audience okay, members. Okay, thank you. The likelihood of municipal governance evolving to allow the general population to participate via remote means will be here forever from now on because that's the way life is like there are a lot of people that would rather be watching from home or on social media and so that is not going anywhere mm -hmm. what we're what we're speaking of is the ability to have a quorum of a board mm -hmm. so right now all of you could be meeting legally from your homes if that changed that's what would change you, you would, we would still likely have to have a zoom or virtual means for the residents to participate and i wouldn't as town administrator i wouldn't recommend changing that because it's it's great to be able to get more people involved even if they're just popping in from their dinner table some of the committees though, like I can't see the council changing doing like a Zoom. They'd be more for a select board and things like that. Yeah. But and smaller committees that have very niche roles, like I can see cultural councils mm -hmm. meeting like that or affordable housing. Yeah, but if they'd have to be in a quorum. How would they? If it goes back to the old way. Yeah, I, that's what I mean. I'm, I think, I'm doubtful yeah. that it'll go back to that. I think if we had to go the old way, it would literally be a holdover for a couple of weeks until the legislation passed just to cover us okay. if we wanted to have something. Gonna, oh, it's, oh I, they're, gonna they're, they're very confident it's going to pass. Well, it's just a matter of how fast it's going to yeah, get to. It was controlling both houses. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. 
Okay, that is my question. Uh, Thank no you. Public address, so there's a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, the second. All in favor? Nice. Nice. Opposed? Being adjourned. Nice.